Finally, I've made a working, battery-based, portable soldering iron. This one can melt solder in under 10 seconds, which is amazing! As you can see for this test, the tip is now cold, because I can touch it with my fingers. Then I touch the tip with solder and press the button. And as you can see, in under 10 seconds the solder is melting, because the internal battery is capable of delivering more than 4 amps of current at 4.2 volts. The soldering iron weighs just above 100 grams. Is very comfortable to use, it can also reach more than 300 degrees, is very fast as we have seen, we can recharge it with a USB connector because we have a protection IC inside on the PCB, and on the screen we can see the battery level, the internal resistance of the iron tip, and we can also set the heating time and the maximum power. On the PCB we have a current sensor, so we can measure the current and with that the power. We also have an amplifier to measure the low resistance of the tip, and we also have a MOSFET to control the power that is going to the tip. And these iron tips are 15 or 20 watts, and they cost just a few dollars, and it's very easy to change the tip, because at the output we have this screw terminal that is very easy to use. Then the case is 3D printed and painted black to give it a better look. So let's see what we need to make this, the problems that I had during this project, how to solder the components and assemble it, and give it some tests. So guys, let's get started! Do you want professional PCBs like these ones that look so good? Then use the services of PCBWay. You can select the board size, any solder mask color that you want, including some exotic purple, or if you want, the matte black and green. You can select the thickness, and the PCB could be from 2 up to 14 layers for some more complex designs. The finish quality is so good, and if you want better connectivity, you could also select the gold finish for your pads. The ordering process is so easy, just go to PCBWay.com, quote now, insert your design settings and the amount of PCBs, upload the Gerber files and order now and receive the PCBs in just a couple of days. What's up my friends, welcome back! These are all the tips for soldering irons that I've tried so far and they work at 5 volts. I was testing for a battery portable soldering iron for a long time and the problem was always the soldering tip power, its resistance, if it has an internal thermocouple or not and so on. But I've made a decision. I found these iron tips and this worked for me. Best of all, the resistance is below 1 ohm, so at 4.2 volts, which is the voltage of the battery that I want to use, they will draw around 4 amps, so 4.2 volts by 4 amps is around 15 watts, which for a portable iron will be more than enough. And as we have seen in the intro, this iron can melt the solder in under 10 seconds. I really wanted to have a temperature control like the other soldering iron design that I've made. But this time I had to remove that option, because these tips don't have a thermocouple inside. So the power regulation is now made with a timer that you can set using the buttons. And you can also set the maximum power that will go to the iron tip. And how can we measure that? Well, the PCB has the ACS712 current sensor, and that is in series with the heating element, so we can easily measure the current flow. And then we also measure the battery voltage, and using these two values, we can get the power, and we can limit that power by applying a PWM signal to the power MOSFET that goes to the iron tip. And if you don't use the iron for example for 10 seconds, the OLED screen will turn off to save some power. Actually, this is the main problem that I have to solve right now. When we don't use it, the PCB is still connected to the battery, and there is no under voltage protection. And why is that? Well, because to charge the battery we use a USB connector as always. And to make the charging process, we use once again the TP4056 IC. And this is the same IC that we have on this protection charging module here. But this IC only protects the battery for over voltage, but not for under voltage. And to do that we need these other two IC that we can see here on the charging module. 
But you see, these ICs will also add an overcurrent protection to the battery. And we don't want that. Why? Well, because the battery has to be able to deliver 4 or 5 amps to the tip for a short period of time. And using these ICs, that would be impossible. So that's why my PCB only has the voltage charging protection. And I must fix this problem for a future version. And by the way, these 18650 batteries are capable of delivering 10 amps with no problems. Ok, so for now we can protect the battery just by printing its voltage value on the screen. And when the battery is low, we can use the buzzer to create an alert sound and then we have to remove the battery manually. The problem is that we should also remove the battery when we are not working, so it won't get empty slowly in sleep mode. Ok guys, so let's check the part list for this project, the schematic that I've made for this, the design for the 3D case and finally mount it. Later we'll make some tests for speed and temperature. The schematic is this one here. To control the power output we use this MOSFET. This could work up to 6 amps at 20 volts. Then it's not really necessary because the supply voltage is the same as the gate voltage but I've also used a small BJT as a gate driver. Then we have the charging module connected to the USB connector and to the other side is connected to the battery and this will give us the VCC value. As you have seen on the screen, we also measure the resistance of the iron tip. And to do that, we use this voltage divider here between the tip resistance and the R8 resistor. And since the output is very low, we use this operational amplifier to amplify that voltage and read it with the Arduino ADC. Then below here we have the current sensor, the ACS712. Now here we have the UART pads so we could program the microcontroller. And these here are the pads connections for the small OLED display. This is yet another small error that I've made, because I've placed these pads backwards. So if I solder the screen right now, it will be in the wrong direction. So for this prototype I had to use a separate module, instead of soldering the pads directly to the screen. Anyway, I will fix this small error in the final PCB design. Ok, so for the components we need of course the PCB, which in my case I've made it with PCBWay. So get the Gerber files and go to PCBWay.com. And here you click code now and add the settings such as the thickness, the color of the solder mask, the amount of PCBs that you want and so on. And then you save to cart. And finally we upload the Gerber files. For 10 PCBs will cost me only $5 plus shipping. And once we make the payment, we receive the PCBs from PCBWay in just a couple of days. Then I make a quick inspection and I can say that this PCB's quality is great. So we can continue with the part list. Together with the PCB, I've also ordered the SMD stencil from PCBWay. It's not mandatory to have this because you could also solder each component one by one. But to go faster, for a few more dollars, I've also got the stencil to help me out. Ok, so then you need all the components that we have on the schematic. The MOSFET, the Atmega328 microcontroller together with the crystal oscillator, the SMD resistors and capacitors which are all in a 0603 package, the small SMD buzzer, some LEDs, the USB connector, the LM358 amplifier, the small OLED screen and the AMS712 current sensor. And then along these components we also need some of these clips for the battery connection for positive and negative. This entire package cost me just $1. As for the iron tip, I've ordered a few of these ones which are marked at 15 watts. And to connect the iron tip to the soldering iron, we need a screw socket like this one which also cost me just a few cents. And like this we can screw or unscrew the tip whenever we want. So these are all the components that we need, and together with all these I've made this 3D printed case, which we will paint later. So now we have the schematic and the components. All is there to do is to assemble everything. First we solder the components. You can do this one by one, or do as I did, and use the SMD stencil, some solder paste, and reflow all the components at once using my homemade reflow hot plate. To make it fast and easier, I've took my Atmega328 microcontroller from an old Arduino Nano. 
In this way it already has a bootloader and I know that it works. So prepare all the components on the side before you apply the paste. Now I add some other PCBs around using some scotch tape so my PCB will stay fixed in place. Then I put the SMD stencil on top to be aligned with all the pads. I add some paste and using a spatula I fill all the holes. Now each pad has a little bit of paste. And now one by one I add all the components with some tweezers. This could be a slow process, but this would be faster than soldering the components one by one. Ok so now all the components are in place. I get my homemade reflow station and turn it on. I place the PCB on top and reflow the components. And there we go, now all the components are soldered in their place. By the way at the first try, the hot plate was set to continuous power, so it reached too high temperatures and look what did to my PCB. It still works but is quite damaged. Some solder mask got removed and the color is changed. That's why I've made the same PCB once again just to be sure. Ok so once you have the PCB, connect an external FTDA programmer to the wired pads and upload a test code to make sure that it works. And in my case I always upload a counter and then I open the serial monitor. And if I get the numbers that means that the microcontroller works. So now we can upload the soldering iron code that you can find below if you want to use it. So compile and upload the code to the PCB. At the output we solder some wires. And to those wires I connect that screw connector for the iron tip. So now we can connect the tip here. You will see that with the USB connector, since we don't have enough power, if you try to heat up the tip right now, the chip will restart, but that's normal. On the other side I get these metal pads for the battery. I solder one for positive and the other one for negative, and this is where the battery will go. After some tests I realized that I must have a bigger capacity between ground and VCC. Otherwise, since the tip will draw a lot of current, it will restart the PCB always. So I will include that capacitor in an SMD version for the next design update. But for now I will solder two of these 22 microfarad capacitors in parallel with some wires to VCC. So now the PCB should be ready. I power the circuit from my supply for now in order to control the voltage and the current. The OLED screen will turn on. I push the front button while touching the tip with solder and in under 10 seconds the solder gets melted. Pretty nice. You can see that on the main screen we have the battery voltage, the tip internal resistance, the maximum on time and the maximum power. And using the other two push buttons we can change these maximum values. And to charge the battery we have a USB connector and the TP4056 chip. And when the battery is full one LED should turn blue. And that's it, it's time to add the case. You have the design for download in the description. I've printed this case with PLA material, 2 perimeters and 20% infill and without supports. And the case is made in such a way that it will keep the battery pads in place. And once I've made sure that the PCB will fit inside together with the battery, I've sandpapered just a little bit to make it smoother and also painted it black with some spray paint. Then we can add some details with a different color to make it look better. So now we pass that screw terminal through the hole and tie the knot on the other side. The case is made once again in such a way that this would fit perfectly. Now we solder the wires back to the PCB and fix the board in place. Also check if the USB connector could be inserted and charge the battery. And if yes we add these tiny buttons to the top case and close it. And to close it we can use just some small screws and that's it. My homemade and portable battery based soldering iron is now complete. Let's get my thermocouple thermometer. I place the tip on top and press the button for around 10 seconds. And look, it reached over 300 degrees in only 10 seconds. 
so I think that the power is enough, and this tool should be more than useful when I work outside of my workshop. In this other test, as you can see, the tip is now cold, because I can touch it with my fingers. I press the button and as you can see, in less than 10 seconds we can melt solder. Pretty nice, right? But remember that this PCB still has some problems, because for now we have to remove the battery when we finish working, and I will fix that in a future version. So guys, the iron is very small, is very comfortable to use it, it weighs just a few grams, is very easy to change the tip shape because we have all sorts of tips on the market, then also the battery is rechargeable with a USB connector and a 5V adapter that we all have, the firmware code is very simple for now, but you could improve it with multiple modes and more features. I'm now studying a way of also measuring the temperature, so stay tuned for that. So guys, I hope that you like this project and maybe make one yourself as well. Maybe you will also learn something new. So give me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so we are at the end of this video. So some of you guys are supporting me on Patreon and thank you very much for that because thanks to you I'm able to buy all these components and the modules that I use for my tutorials. And if you would like to support me as well, you have the links for my Patreon, for my website and my shop below in the description. Thank you for everything.